Hello, I'm Beth Wagner, physical therapist. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fit crutches and how to use them properly. I'll include instructions for adjusting the height, ways to make them more comfortable, and I'll show you how to walk with crutches in non-weight bearing with two crutches, partial weight bearing with two crutches, and then progressed to using just one crutch so that you can focus on other aspects of your recovery and get back to doing the things you love to do every single day. Okay, let's go ahead and look at a set of crutches. Now most underarm or axillary crutches are very similar in style. The axillary pads are on the top here, those go underneath the arms, and then the hand grips are on the side here. It's possible to make crutches more comfortable by adding pads to the axillary pad here and to the hand grip. Now Amazon and other medical equipment providers do sell those different additional pads. Sometimes people also just wrap towels around these uh, pads. Now if you choose to borrow crutches from a, a friend, it's important to make sure they're in good working condition. So besides looking at how worn out the pads are, be sure to check for the tips on the bottom of the crutch to make sure that these are not excessively worn out. Also look at where the crutch adjusts for height and where the hand grip position adjusts. Make sure that the wing nut or the push button is intact and that you're able to actually adjust the crutch. Okay, now let's look at how to adjust the height of the crutch. The height range for the crutch is usually printed on the bottom of the crutch. So this crutch indicates a 5'2 button here, all the way to a 5'10 button here. Pediatric versions for heights under 5'2 and taller or heavy duty versions are also available for people who are taller than 5'10. Now a good place to start with the height adjustment is to just go with how tall you are. Now I'm somewhere between 5'7 and 5'8, so I'll start with the crutch set at 5'7. All right, now when you're standing tall in whatever footwear you will usually use the crutches with. So if you'll be using them mostly indoors barefoot, then do this height adjustment barefoot. If you're mostly going to be using them outside, then wear a pair of shoes. If you'll be using the crutches for both indoor and outdoor use, you'll wanna wear a low shoe so that you don't have to change the adjustment when you go in and out of the house or put shoes on or off. So while I'm standing with good posture, nice and tall, I'll place the crutches under my arms next to my side and then relax my arms along the side of the crutch. The first thing you'll wanna look for is to be able to fit two fingers between the top of the pad and the bottom of the armpit. So that's just about right for me. The next thing you'll look for is the position of the hand grip with your arm relaxed and just hanging by your side the hand grip should come right to the crease of your wrist. So that's just about right for me. When you place your palm or your hand on the hand grip, there should be about a 20, 15 to 20 degree angle in the elbow. So that's about right for me as well. Okay, so with both of these adjusted for the proper fit, with two fingers between the bottom of the pad and my armpit, and with the hand grips right at the crease of my wrist, I'm all set with the height adjustment. When standing with, with crutches, it's important to stand with tall posture. Now it's very common to see people sort of hanging or resting on the top of the armpit pads, especially when one leg is not in use or is non-weight bearing. Now there are two key issues with this type of posture. Number one is it's poor posture and there can be neck and shoulder strain that, that result from this type of standing. But the second, even more important issue with resting on the axillary pads here is that this can cause a nerve injury in the nerves that run through the armpit and down into the hands. If this pressure lasts long enough, that nerve injury can become permanent. So it's very important to be standing upright, even when one leg is not in use. To help with stability, squeeze the top of the crutches between the upper arm and the side wall of the chest. Now let's move on to walking with crutches. First, I wanna show you how to stand and sit with crutches. 
Now I'll show you how to sit into a chair and stand back up using two crutches and standing on just one leg. The first step is to bring one crutch over to the other side. And I'll show you this going both directions so that you can see it well. Bring one crutch over to the other side and tuck it underneath the armpit. And then lift up your thumb and place it over the second crutch. And I'll show you on the other side. So I'll bring the right crutch over, tuck it underneath my left armpit, lift my left thumb up, and put it over the hand grip. Now with both crutches in the left hand, let the, let the armpit pads go behind the arm just a little bit. Now I'll reach back with my right hand for the chair and go ahead and sit back. Now I'll move the crutches down in front of my lap or rest them off to the side depending on, the, on where you're sitting. Now to stand up, we'll reverse that process. Hold both crutches on one side with the tips out forward and out of the way and with the armpit pads just behind your armpit. And use the crutch tips for balance. So I'm pressing down through the crutch tips and pressing through the chair. Once I'm standing up, then pull the crutch up to stand. Okay, now I'll show you that on this side. First bring the left crutch around, tuck it under the right armpit, and reach the right thumb over the left crutch hand grip. Now I'll place the tips just a little bit forward and let the armpit pads go just a little bit behind my armpit so I can still squeeze them here between my upper arm and my chest wall. Now when I go to sit down, I'm going to reach for the chair with my left hand and let the crutches go out behind me. But I still have the support of the tips on the ground. Okay, now when it comes time to stand up again, we'll want to tuck the crutches behind the armpit, bring the tips out forward a little bit. So with the crutches off to the side, tips on the ground, place my left hand on the chair and I'll use my left hand and the crutch tips to stand up. And come on up and bring the crutches underneath your armpit. And then bring the inside crutch over to the other side. Okay, and now you're ready to move. I'll show you that one more time in real time without the verbal instructions. and I'm ready to walk. Now I'll show you a walking progression from the greatest use of support with the crutches to the least use, as if you were progressing from a leg injury, like a bone fracture. So first we'll start in non-weight bearing. So let's say my right leg has been injured. So I have it up off the ground here. To prepare for the first step, move the crutches forward about six to eight inches in front of your left toe and make sure the tips are a couple inches away from your body so that you have enough room for your hips to move through the crutches. Okay, with the tips in place, I'm going to press down through the hand grips, squeeze the axillary pads between my upper arm and my chest, and I'll lean forward, lift my left foot, press down through the hand grips, and take a step. Now I'll show you that from the side. With the right leg lifted, Move the crutches forward about six to eight inches in front of your left foot and a few inches out to the side. Now squeezing the armpit pads between the upper arm and the chest, press down through the hand grips, lean forward and take a step with your left foot. Then move the crutches up to meet your body. Now I'll show you several steps in a row. Move the crutches forward six to eight inches, a couple inches away from your body squeeze the armpit pads, press through the hand grips, lean forward, and step. Now, move the crutches forward again, lean forward, and step. As balance improves, it will become easier to take step after step, like this. Now I'll show you a progression to using two crutches with partial weight bearing. So my right leg that's been injured can be on the ground. 
but only with some pressure put through it. Move the crutch tips forward, again about six to eight inches and a couple inches away from your body. And step forward with the right foot or the injured foot. Press down through the hand grips as the right foot comes down onto the ground. And then bring your left foot forward to meet the right foot. And then accept the weight on your left foot. I'll show you that from the side and we'll progress to taking several steps. Crutches go forward six to eight inches. Place your right foot right in between the crutches and then bring your left foot to meet it. And crutches first, injured leg, and then non-injured leg. Crutches, injured leg, non-injured leg. Crutches, injured leg, non-injured leg. And once you feel more comfortable, you may be able to swing the left leg through like this. So the order will be crutches first, right leg, and then left leg steps through. And then crutches and right leg, left leg swings through. Crutches, right la leg, left leg swings through. Once you're able to place about 75% or so of your weight on the injured leg, it, is, it may be time to progress to using just one crutch. Now, hypothetically, if it's my right leg that's injured, I'm going to want to use the crutch on the left side, the opposite of the injured leg. And the reason for that will become clear as I demonstrate this technique. Starting with tall posture, bring the left crutch forward and then the right foot. And then step forward with the left foot. Left crutch, right foot, step forward with the left foot. I'll show you this from the side and we'll progress to taking more steps. Left crutch and right foot, and then the left foot. Left crutch, right foot, and left foot. It's important to take your time when using crutches. Take quite a few steps before you try to increase the speed of your movement. It's more important to be safe and a little bit slower than press your speed too much and risk having another injury. Okay, but once you're ready to speed this process up a little bit, here's what it might look like. Crutch and right foot at the same time, and then left foot. Crutch and right foot, and left foot. And now to take it one step farther, crutch and right foot, and the left foot steps through. Crutch and right foot, left foot steps through. Crutch and right foot, left foot steps through crutch and right foot, and then a left step. If you have weakness or an injury to both legs and you wanna use the crutches to help support your weight when you take a step with both the left and the right foot, here's a great technique. We'll alternate moving a crutch forward and taking a step with the opposite foot. So first I'll move the right crutch forward and then step with the left foot. And then move the left crutch forward and take a step with the right foot. Right crutch, left foot, left crutch, right foot. Right crutch, left foot, left crutch, right foot. Now when that becomes comfortable and you're ready to increase the speed, you can step with the crutch and opposite foot at the same time. So we'll go right crutch and left foot, left crutch with right foot, left cr right crutch left foot left crutch and right foot in other words opposite crutch and foot at the same time Also, when you're first starting to walk with crutches, be sure that you're looking at where you're putting the tips on the ground to avoid tripping over any items or placing the tip on something that might slide or move out from underneath you. Once you become more comfortable with the crutches and you're walking in familiar areas, such as around your home or your immediate community, and you know what the ground is like, and you know there are no tripping or slipping hazards, then it's great to look up now and then, and then look back down at the ground to check for safety and look up again. 
Also, be sure to watch for other people when you're using crutches in a crowded area. Because it's important to keep the tips out to the side for adequate room for your hips to move, those tips being out on the ground on the side can trip up people. So just be sure to watch where you're walking and watch for other people walking around you. Also, be sure that when you set them down somewhere, you don't inadvertently put them out so that the tips create a tripping hazard. For example, at a restaurant or other place in public. Try and hook the crutches on your own chair or lean them against a wall, or otherwise just make sure that they're close to your body. All right, and turning with crutches is fairly straightforward, but it's worth mentioning the importance of keeping the tip out of your way. In non-weight bearing, when I make a turn, I'm simply going to turn the crutches in the direction where I want to make the turn. So from here, if I want to turn right, I'll turn the crutches to the right first and then step with my left foot. Turn the crutches, step with my left foot. Same thing turning to the left. Turn the crutches and then pivot the foot. Turn the crutches and step or pivot with the foot. The key is to make sure that the tips are staying out to the side and not ending up right in front of your foot where you need to take a step. And that can happen more easily when you're walking faster. I'll show you a couple turns. So as I'm walking forward, that's great. Now if I want to take a turn to the right, if I start to make that turn while the crutches are forward, I'm more likely to lose my balance or end up running into one of the crutch tips. So it's key to even up your foot with the crutch and then turn. Make that turn and then continue walking. So turn the crutches first and then turn your foot. Now walking up and down curb steps and a full flight of stairs can be challenging with crutches, but there are ways to do it. Check the link in the description below for my video focused specifically on managing curbs and stairs while on crutches. For safety purposes, what I always recommend that people start with is simply to sit down on your butt and go up and down the steps on your butt. Ask somebody else to carry your crutches for you. That is especially key following an injury or surgery where you've had a lot of painkillers, where you might have some numbness, some foggy headedness, or otherwise a sense of imbalance and you aren't quite 100% with it yet. Safety is most important to avoid further injury or a secondary injury. I hope you found this information helpful to use crutches safely and comfortably so that you can get back to doing the things you love to do every single day. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I'm able.